Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Jim PF, and on today's episode, we're taking a look at one more Game of Thrones whiskey. I've just covered the kind of Talisker Special Reserve, and it's actually one of two that I picked up that and this. Now, I was going to pick up the Lagavulin nine year old as well, and maybe even the Oban, but I didn't have the funds at the time and probably won't for a while. But I picked these two up because they were actually really quite cheap. They popped up on Amazon for £33 each. Obviously, I know worldwide you can't necessarily get whiskey on Amazon, but in the UK, we are fortunate enough to be able to. And I've seen these prices sort of slowly drop now. You can find them on various websites for around about £30, these particular ones. Now, some of them are different in prices, like, for instance, the, the Lagavulin is a little bit more. You might spend over £40 for that, but they're significantly cheaper than the original asking price and way cheaper than the ridiculous kind of craziness that went on on the secondary market afterwards. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, I actually stayed well away from this because I don't tend to really get into these special releases. I don't tend to scrub around for special bottlings or limited bottlings. I can't be bothered to throw my hat into the fray when I've got so many more available whiskies to try without having to mess around with the secondary market. But I know there's a lot of people that are into that sort of thing. They want to get kind of the next best thing and whatnot. I'm just be a, a collector, which I definitely am not. I'm uh, really a, a, a drinker and a sharer, let's say. So yeah, the, the bottles were released on a kind of limited edition. These all say limited edition, which is a little bit of a farce. There are so many bottles of this around. They only released a small amount of this limited edition though. They sold out really quickly and within days they were on the secondary market for ridiculous amounts of money. The eight original bottles that are in the range were about sort of 350 pounds retail to buy. And they ended up being right up to the lofty heights of about a grand and a half, which is, I have to say, utterly insane. But I did understand it. People were looking to collect. Then Diageo did the kind of master stroke, if you will, which was to flood the market with a whole heap extra that whether they hold it, held it back on purpose or they were still bottling it, I don't know. Anyway, it just devalued the whole thing. Uh, people weren't able to sell them anymore. And any shops that still had them in stock found themselves in a situation where these could be bought literally, literally anywhere. They were just everywhere. So now places like Amazon are just trying to get rid of their stock because they're not moving. It's a lot cheaper. Long story short, if you were ever interested in any of these Game of Thrones bottlings, now's the time to buy because you can pick them up for a hell of a lot cheaper. Going right back to the start, I picked up the Talisker and the Clone Leash because those are really one of the cheapest twos in there, but also very interesting ones. I'm a big fan of Talisker anyway, and I'm a big fan of Clone Leash anyway, so it seemed like I should get it. If you add to the fact that this one here is 51.2%, which is a quite a high ABV really considering what you're actually getting for it. Yes, it's added color, but for 33 pounds to get a 51.2% whiskey is not a bad sniff, I have to say. Hence the reason why I picked it up. Enough wittering, let's get into the glass and see what we've actually got. See if it's really worth that money, even though I just said, go and get it if you're interested. Indulge me, on the nose then. So, although I've said before I'm a fan of Clone Leash, I'm no way an expert, so if you're looking to try and find out if this is worth the money versus, say, the 14, I'm going to probably say no straight from the bat, but let's get onto the tastings and see what we've got. Now, right from the start, it's got vanilla, kind of oak lead nose, there's some citrus on the back end. There's this kind of weird mustiness as well, this kind of cereal biscuitiness that's going on in the background. Quite a nice nose. Let's move on to the palette. Now that high ABV is making itself known straight away. Just before that ABV kicks in, you're getting that kind of signature Klein Leash waxiness, but it doesn't last very long, I have to admit overtaken by that ABV straight away, which I have to say, I'm a fan of. I like high ABV whiskey, even if it's no age statement, probably quite youthful, one of those things. Once that kind of spiciness, that pepperiness is dissipating a little bit, you get a little burst of flavor. And with there, you're getting kind of, kind of juicy vanillas and kind of apple notes, that sort of thing. One more taste. Now the finish it isn't overly long, medium in nature. But it is surprisingly juicy, surprisingly mouth-watery. I can feel myself salivating right now, ready for another sip. I'm going to take one more. It's a three-sip review. Now, I have to say, 
considering I stayed well out of it, I'm pretty happy with my purchase on this one. £33 is not a lot of money to spend on a bottle of whiskey these days. Yes, you could probably get some higher quality for that. Like a good example, I, I always talk about it. £35, the Kill Care in 12-year-old. Absolutely superb whiskey and very understated. But like I said at the beginning of the show, if you're interested in Game of Thrones, if you're interested in these bottles per se, if you're interested in drinking and not collecting, then now's the time to pick up stuff like this. I don't think you'll be disappointed in this one or the Talisker if you're a fan of Talisker. I haven't tried any of the others to review to tell you that though, mainly because a lot of them sounded like kind of disappointing. I have to say like the Cardu is exactly the same as Cardu Golds, but just rebranded and a little bit extra on price. And the uh, Royal Loch Nagar, not really that interested in it. I was interested in the Lagavulin. I am interested in the Oban. I would try the Mortlac, but I'm not spending that sort of money on a bottle like this, have to say. So yeah, I have to say it really depends on where you are in your headspace with whiskey. If you, you weren't interested in these at all, just ignore it, move on, spend your money on something else. But if you bought these originally and were hoping for an investment, that dream, that ship has sailed, open them up and enjoy them because you can leave them for 40 years, they're not going to be worth anything. I, I, I almost guarantee it. There's so many bottles around, so many bottles. It's unbelievable that there are so many other people that are interested in that. Drink them, get them drunk. But if you're interested in, in buying to drink, get it. That's pretty much the end of that.